tired of seasoning your pot roast with tears of disappointment? It's time to set and forget everything you thought you knew about cooking the classic American comfort dish. Choosing the right cut of beef is really key for whatever beef dinner recipe you're making. You need a part of the cow that got some exercise, something tough, lean, and laced with a lot of tendons or ligaments. This connective tissue is not good for a fancy steak, but when cooked properly, pot roast style, that sinewy stuff breaks down to add tenderness and richness to your roast. Recommended cuts are the chuck, brisket, and round. Before putting your roast in a slow cooker or a sealed pot in the oven, brown all sides of the meat. This extra step will boost the flavor of your pot roast because it creates what cooks like to call browned bits that stick to the bottom of the pan. You'll definitely want to deglaze those bits with some liquid, and instead of using boring water or beef broth, add another dimension of flavor with a little… Sweet berry wine! <laughs> or maybe just some tomato paste and red grape juice. It's up to you. A big draw to making stews and braises is that they take so long to cook that the meat will fall off the bone and separate from the fat. A little fat can add a lot of flavor to your pot roast, but it can also turn your roast into a big greasy mess if you forget to trim any excessive fat. Some roasts have large fat caps that are easy to chop off that should get the job done. A lot of the smaller pieces of fat will be rendered out while it's cooking and add flavor, so there's no need to go overboard with a butcher knife. Pot roast can be an appealing weeknight meal because it's relatively easy. That's why everyone loves a good crockpot meal. It requires minimal effort and usually creates the least amount of dirty dishes possible. While it sounds too easy to be true, there is one extra step to elevating your pot roast to the next level. Browning the meat before letting it simmer. Searing any piece of meat creates a Maillard reaction, which causes the sugars and proteins inside a piece of meat to break down due to heat. It adds a caramelized effect to the exterior of the meat, which ultimately benefits the texture of the resulting pot roast. Searing meat is essential for steaks and pork chops, but it can also result in the richest pot roast you've ever had. The key is to allow the meat to get to room temperature before searing and patting it dry on all sides. Then you sear each side until they are golden brown before removing the meat from the pan and proceeding with the rest of your recipe. It's also recommended that you keep the crispy brown bits at the bottom of the pan to add even more flavor to the vegetables and gravy that accompany the meal. Making a pot roast is essentially a basic lesson in braising meat. It's cooked low and slow in a bunch of liquid, resulting in fork tender meat that melts in your mouth. It's easy to keep your recipe simple with just the cut of beef, a few vegetables, and a little water. But adding more flavorful liquids into the braise is the secret ingredient that leads to out-of-this-world pot roast. There are so many different liquids you can throw into the pot. Beer and wine, stock, and tomato sauce are all great options. A splash of balsamic or apple cider vinegar will help the meat break down, and ingredients like chopped anchovies and soy sauce can bump up the savory factor of the dish. It's actually pretty simple to look in your pantry and find something tasty that would go well with the pot roast. Preparing this classic comfort food meal is really all about getting creative and making sure you're tasting the food along the way for a balanced final plate. Pot roast is a labor of love. It takes time for the sauce to come together and for the meat to cook to just the right temperature. This is why one of the most shameful acts you can do is to throw away the braising liquid that you've used to soak your pot roast. Shame, shame, shame! Shame on you! This golden liquid has so many uses, whether you turn it into gravy for your pot roast dinner or incorporate it into other meals. Pot roast enthusiasts take their braising liquid seriously. One Reddit user took to the site to ask for advice regarding the best way to dispose of their braising liquid. Horrified home chefs were quick to respond, pleading with the author of the post to save the pivotal ingredient. Ensuring that there is a complementary balance of flavors is pivotal to any pot roast, which is why seasoning should not be an afterthought. There are so many different recipes featuring an array of spices, herbs, and aromatics to turn up the flavor. 
it doesn't have to be over the top. A little salt, pepper, garlic, and thyme can go a long way. The key is to use each ingredient generously and layer the flavors along the way. If you want to get even more creative with it, you can try a Mississippi pot roast recipe that relies on the flavors of ranch dressing powder, au jus powder, banana peppers, and a whole lot of butter to achieve the signature flavors of a very hearty meal. Beef is like a blank canvas that's begging you to get creative. Simply add a little cumin, chili powder, herb du Provence, or whatever else is in your spice cabinet, and discover how these ingredients can totally transform the typical weeknight dinner. Pot roast might be a staple, but that doesn't mean it has to be flavorless. One of the biggest misconceptions about pot roast is that all you need to do is… Set it and forget it. Set it and forget it. You just set it and forget it. You just set it and you forget about it. Minimal effort when cooking is one of the biggest draws of using a slow cooker, and a pot roast is one of those meals that seems pretty hands-off. For the most part, you can preoccupy yourself with other things while the pot roast is cooking low and slow in its own juices. However, small added efforts like searing the meat beforehand and turning the roast a few times while it's cooking can yield the best possible results for a roast. It's easier than you'd imagine to overcook pot roast. Sure, it's not as finicky as grilling a chicken breast or roasting a piece of salmon, but it does take some time for the meat to fall apart on its own. Thus, overcooking can lead to a roast that is mushy and tasteless. You don't really have to worry about burning the roast outside of the searing phase. There is, however, a noticeably different taste between a fork tender roast and an overcooked roast that is either too tough or too pulpy. The easiest way to avoid this issue is by using a meat thermometer when making your pot roast or whenever you're working with raw meat. The USDA recommends that a medium roast should reach 145 degrees and a well-done roast should reach at least 160 degrees, which is a good rule of thumb to follow. It's hard to be patient when you spend a significant amount of time in the kitchen working on putting together a perfect meal. It's human nature to want to start serving yourself a plate the second your meat thermometer tells you that your pot roast is perfectly cooked. But all meats generally benefit from having a short resting period between the time that they are done cooking and the moment that they are sliced. The juices in a hot piece of meat run freely, meaning that they will spill out once you cut into the roast. Resting allows the juices to better absorb into the meat so that the flavors make it to your mouth instead of sitting on the cutting board. It's not like you have to wait for the meat to be room temperature before cutting, but you should let the pot roast sit for 5 to 10 minutes before serving it for the best possible result. Results. What's the one thing that can take a ho-hum pot roast and kick it up a notch? Gravy. That's right. Once you save that sweet braising liquid, it's only right to turn it into the best gravy possible to accompany your meal. It's pretty simple to make gravy. It's all about the ratio of flour to fat. The pan juice will do all the work to add flavor, so all you need to do is focus on whisking the gravy so that it's thick and not lumpy. A little cornstarch will go a long way, but you don't want the gravy so thick and gelatinous that it's unappetizing. It's all about going slow, tasting as you go along, and being patient with the amount of time it sometimes takes this magical meat sauce to come together. A Redditor shared a simple recipe for making homemade gravy featuring just braising liquid and cornstarch. They wrote, Bring gravy to a boil, turn down the heat to a low boil, stir the gravy until it thickens. It's so simple that there's no excuse not to try out this technique to ensure your next roast is accompanied by thick, delicious gravy. We'll admit that it's easy to get sick of pot roast. Some people may avoid the dish altogether, having had to endure one too many subpar roasts as part of their family's weeknight dinner rotation, and then being subjected to leftovers afterward, as well as any other family dinner time antics. <laughs> However, it's also true that pot roast is a hearty meal that can feed a lot of people with relatively low-cost ingredients. If it's become boring, then it's possible that the biggest issue comes down to how it's prepared, and not anything inherent in the meat itself. Thankfully, this is a relatively simple problem to fix. 
Even if you have a tried and true recipe for pot roast, try to mix up how you cook it to keep things interesting. If you tend to make pot roast in a slow cooker, for instance, try using a Dutch oven to see how it yields different results. Consider trying different cuts of meat, reaching for in-season vegetables, or experimenting with different seasonings for a new take that will keep diners interested. Unless you're feeding a crowd, you're going to be stuck with a lot of leftover pot roast. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Is this is one of those meals that can taste better on the second day after the flavors have had time to harmonize and come together. However, that still doesn't mean you want to eat leftover pot roast for the next five nights. Luckily, there are some simple ways to get creative with those leftovers, which can act as a blank slate for your culinary creativity. For a hearty breakfast recipe, we suggest using your leftover roast meat to make a thrifty and satisfying breakfast hash. You can also shred up the meat to make pulled beef sliders or tacos for a simple weeknight meal. Thin out the roast broth to make a soup that freezes well and can be added to other soups and stews as inspiration strikes you. It's hard to believe that a dish as classic as pot roast would come with much controversy, but the truth is that nothing is sacred in the culinary world. Not even an American dinner staple like pot roast. With that in mind, we must turn to what could be the most controversial ingredient of pot roast, potatoes. Potatoes are a typical ingredient in pot roast that cook alongside the carrots and celery below the meat. Yet Reed Drummond, better known as the Pioneer Woman, believes that diced potatoes have no place in the dish. Drummond argues that simply cooking cubed potatoes alongside the meat turns their texture into a mealy mess. Instead, she recommends serving pot roast with a side of mashed potatoes. For those who are dealing with picky eaters, this potato switch-up could help liven up your typical pot roast without having to try anything too out of the box.